my life teaching goal is to just think about this. When you get up here today, your opinion doesn't matter when you are debating, and your opinion of the audience doesn't matter when you're in the audience. The whole point is for these two teams to argue the absolute extremes. You use the word absolutely, at all costs, never, under any circumstances, in your debate. Because we could all agree at the midpoint for every one of these topics. I guarantee you that you and I, in conversation, would probably agree somewhere in the middle on all of them. I know we would. And the point of the debate is to really push the audience to consider the really extreme positions. And I want you to be very hypothetical about this. If I notice that you're hemming and hawing and getting wishy-washy, I will cut in. I'll interrupt you. And if you feel I'm picking on one side, then just argue harder. The audience doesn't speak during the debates. Today we'll have two topics. The audience will watch and then vote. Your warm-up should say population debate. Then put away the warm-up. And the first topic for today, nations that rely on U.S. aid must have or create strict population control measures. Agree on this side, disagree on that side. Now, right there. Oh, no. Of course we're the first. Oh, Never talk to you. Sam, will you please bring that blue chair behind me? I can't, I can't, they do stuff that I don't. Yeah, that's all I am. Quiet, please. I mean. Quiet, <laughs> <laughs> please. Members of the audience, please notice when they get up there, they put their names on the yes and no sides. Members of the debate, please notice the audience receives one ballot per debate. On your ballot, you'll put your name and your period number, plus the names of the students on each team. This is debate number one. Later today, we'll have debate number two. Um, Regarding the ballots, there's a little rubric, a table about arguments and cross-examination and rebuttal and evidence, demeanor, fair play, teamwork, preparation, and overall. You can fill in that rubric any way you want, pluses, minuses, A through F, 1 through 10, smiley face, sad face, check mark 0, 1, I don't care. But you must fill out the rubric so that the kids in the debate know what you're talking about and why you graded them that way. You can leave comments at the bottom. At the end of the debate, you must pick a winner or loser. Please look up. You will circle who won, affirmative or negative, on the rubric. The way this works is, We'll flip coins, decide who goes first, decide who gets the last word. Whoever goes first, they just state their position. 
you're not going to build your whole argument. You're just going to say what you believe as emphatically as possible. So you're going to say, we can't give people money if they don't have population control because blah, blah, blah. And you're going to say, we can't put conditions on aid because blah, blah, blah. And you're going to keep it short and sweet. Don't read. Don't read. Keep it short and sweet. Just look at your notes, figure out what you're going to say, and then just say it. Everybody got that? Yeah. Uh, what if you have like, facts that you have to read off of this? Like, as soon as you start reading them, the audience won't care anymore. So you should look at your fact and then figure out how to say it. <laughs> Thanks. So we believe that providing that the money, I mean, the countries that we provide aid to, money to, need to have strict population control policies to control the population, because without that, I mean, it, it's a bad investment if they don't have strict population control policies, because the money that they need will keep growing as long as their population keeps growing. So we'll be losing money in the long term instead of. If instead of helping them modernize, and once they're modernized, then we'll get some of that money back. Well, for, we believe that poor countries that the U.S. gives aid to should not have population control because it is unethical to tell other countries not to reproduce. It's against cultural and religious beliefs, and since they're relying on our relief efforts, we should let their population grow until they're big enough to support themselves. So now, each side tries to quickly as possible make a point. You either make a statement, or you question something they said, or you want to keep it really, really short and really, really fast. Go. Yeah, I'd like to question the, fact, or the statement that you said that they could support themselves if they get bigger, but I don't believe that because if they have too much, I mean, if they have too much population and too many people in their country, they're going to need a lot more food. And they already don't have enough land to grow that food on, so how are they going to make enough food to support that growing population? Well, if we limit the population growth, there won't be any um, new people coming into the workforce, and their economy will go down because it will be all senior citizens and ones that, like, in the next generations, and there won't be anyone making money to um, for their country, so that's why they shouldn't have. Well, we're not trying to cut out population growth entirely. We're just trying to reduce it to maybe one or two children per family. And so those two children can still go into the workforce and provide enough food for the smaller population if we have those population controls. But if we don't have any population control and the population goes way out of control, we're not going to have enough land physically to produce enough food to um, provide for that entire population. If, if the population is struggling to even support people, how would it it wouldn't be able for it to go out of control if they're struggling to feed their nation. Um, well, the top, the top recipients of food aid from the United States are all in Africa, and all of them have on average five births per woman. So basically that says that the countries that need food most have the most kids per woman. So we're contributing to helping them co increase their population. The more money we give them, the more, basically the larger population, the more money, the more food, the more aid they're going to need from the U.S. It's also hypocritical for the U.S. to like, to enforce population control because they're like the largest nation, so we can't tell smart countries not to reproduce, even though we're like the biggest nation, one of the biggest nations there is. But we're not on average having five children per, per woman. And we have enough arable land and enough food production to support that population, whereas the small countries in Africa don't have enough arable land and any means to produce enough food for that growing population. So I want to ask you guys a question. An audience, I, I kind of think about this a lot too. Which is the greatest evil? To Withhold A. Let somebody start. Or to give A in populations that are growing and in some cases will just create the need for more A. 
That's exactly, I mean, it does create a need for more aid, because foreign aid grew by $7 million to Israel between 2008 and 2012, and their population has been increasing, and so if we keep giving them all that money, then it's just a bad investment, because we're not going to be... Well, now they're becoming dependent on us. Yeah, they're dependent on us. They're thinking, oh, if we have all this money, might as well just keep growing our population, because they're going to keep giving us more money to have more population. Well, at a certain point, they're going to be able to support themselves, so they won't need our relief really anymore. And um, eventually, um, if you try to uh, put a strict population control, uh, it'll mess around with the population pyramid, and that'll just make more political instability, and the aid will um, end up going to the people that need it if you enforce a strict population control. Um, so you're literally saying just. If they can't pull it off, would you let them start? Well, no, not entirely. Um, if we, I'm saying... No, you are. Okay. Yes, we are. And is there a nice way to say that? How do you justify that? Well, our time is responsible for their own country, not just for the start. It's not ours. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, for example, it's kind of like, it's, you're having children and you can't support them, you need to stop having children. If you can't support them, don't have any more. It's not somebody else's job to help you support your family. If you're a single mother and you can't have breath, provide enough food for the two kids you already have, you're not going to go and have another baby. Well, then that's their idea. They know not to do that, but they don't need the population control. Well, if they know not to do that, why are they, why are they doing having that? Five, seven children that they can't have support? Right, like I've got this bad habit. I just can't stop making babies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible habit. <laughs> I even practice. Um, <laughs> okay, and I've got this horrible habit. I <laughs> yeah, you go. Okay, I've got this horrible habit. I can't stop making babies. <laughs> and you'll just. Keep on giving the aid, like for real, like it, it's like that single. Well, what about when I've got too many babies for you to support? And it, it's I'll like because it that's what you're saying. <laughs> so can you say that differently? Oh, so eventually when they can get back on their feet, we'll start working in the regular <laughs> economy, and eventually we'll stop relying on our aid. And let's just imagine that that doesn't happen <laughs> sometimes. It doesn't always. My demographic transition is not 100%, so, and that, so and what? For their statement, maybe they won't end up relying on our uh, money forever, right? Yeah, maybe not, maybe, maybe not. not. But if they did? Are they just magically going to find enough production, uh, enough food production that's the same, they're already growing population? Where's that going to come from? Unless they reduce their population and have their, uh, what's it called, their uh, transition, demographic transition? and actually lower their birth rates to their death rates and start being a developed, not a developed country, a productive country that can support themselves. If for their population control, they're never going to get used to like bringing like employing their nation on their own because they're always going to have financial aid and they're always going to have population control. Like they're never going to be able to know how to do information on their own. Well, with population control, they might not. We're trying to make them not dependent on foreign aid. We're trying to get them to not. We're trying to make them so we don't have to pay for them to survive. We're trying to make them survive on their own. And it's like if that single mother with the five kids had to depend on welfare, the more kids she has, this, our government is still going to give them more money based on their dependence. But once you reach that max dependence, then you don't get any more money after those kids. So why should we pay for them to have more and more and more kids? Because if they have more kids, they might go into what the Americans did and go into like a baby boom recession, where economically they would grow because they have so many people in the workforce. It's not our job to support them. It's not our job to financially support them. They should be able to control their population and we'll, like, we, we can help provide them, but it's, there's a point where we need to step back and it's not a good investment. Anybody want to say anything different <coughs> than what they've said already? 
to like, stop giving them aid and let them like figure it out for themselves? Or is that if, if they object to having strict population control policies, then yeah. I mean, if they don't want to do, if they don't want to do us, not do us a favor, if they don't want to do themselves a favor by having strict population controls policies uh, enforced by us or them, then they're not going to, they shouldn't get our aid if they don't want to do what we ask them to do. No, this is saying if we can't be responsible for themselves, then we shouldn't help them. Why should we be responsible for them if they're just going to keep doing what we ask them not to? Well, how would you plan on enforcing these population controls? Like, are you going to go there and say, sorry, you're only allowed to have one child family? Like, well, even though you're already, like, facing hardships and trying to survive on your own, sorry, now it may be against your culture and religious beliefs, but you can't have any more children. Well, sorry. It's, it's not always about that. I mean, it's, you got to set up, uh, you got to go into their government and talk to their government and have them do it and have them set up the policies themselves so it doesn't look like we're just coming in and, like, setting up policies, then everybody will, all the actual people of the countries probably won't follow it if it's like America coming over and saying, oh, you guys can't have kids. You have to convince their government to do it themselves. That is what we're doing. We aren't going there and telling them, don't have any If they want money from us, then that's how it's going to have to work, I feel like. I mean, so stop having kids. Not stop having kids, just okay. they, need, they need to regulate it, yeah. Instead of having five kids, maybe just stick to two or three. I'm already late. Now conclusions. Uh, who had the first word? So you have the first conclusion and then they'll get the last one. Conclude away. Get all conclusive. Yeah. Okay, so basically the U.S. is only going to support countries um, with financial aid if they create strict population policies because it's not a good investment for the U.S. and by us giving them financial aid, uh, basically we're hurting ourselves and we're hurting them because they're becoming dependent on us. We think it'd be unethical to force population control in poor countries and that would give aid and relief to because it's against cultural and religious beliefs um, to not be Students in the audience, first of all, fill out your ballots right now. Nobody talk. I'll collect the ballots in about one minute. No, sorry, in about one second. Finish those ballots. Finish those ballots. Here comes Austin to pick them up. <laughs> hey, Austin. Austin. Go this way. conditions, and you did agree that we should make demand before we give aid. Like our Now comes the part where you get to talk about your personal opinion before I open it up to the audience. So, is there anything you want to say about just what you think personally? Like, what do you actually... I mean, personally, I kind of agree with Andrew that we shouldn't... I mean, it's their cultural right to have as many kids as they want, but if they're going to depend on us, then we should 
they should have some regulation. Yeah, I kind of agree with Cedar. Like, um, like you could try to find the middle of this problem, which is like putting a number of amount of kids. But, yeah. but do you all think that's realistic? You go to a poor nation that's starving, and they can work on that? Yeah. Like, I mean, look at the places we're talking about. It's not going to, like, an average American family and tell them to control their fertility, which already is a challenge. But we're talking about, like, the least developed nations on Earth. And I think effectively, if you make a condition on them, you're effectively saying that they're just not going to get aid. Audience, what do you think? Like, uh, have you all heard that thing, teach a man to fish, uh, feed a man to fish, teach a man to fish thing? Yeah. You all see what I mean with this, with this uh, analogy? Is it sort of like that? Yeah. I feel like since we're already giving them money, it's not like we owe it to them to not regulate. So like, they kind of owe something to us because some of these countries just could go and then die out and never get our money back. So. And so are we being smart businessmen with our aid? Or are we helping people? I think we're just helping people. Because those countries aren't really in a position to impact money that's more than because they need to support. I mean, like, what's the right type of aid strategy? Yeah. Yeah, like what you're saying, we, we do have to have a, a good aid, stra aid strategy so that the, we don't have these huge population explosions that, you know, increase poverty. Perhaps we, like, give them, like, like a poor country or something, like, like we'll give them, like, financial aid help. But then, if, if we're not getting any, anything, like, out of it, like, anything, like, economically or resources, then it doesn't seem to help us economically. economically. So if you, like, perhaps, like, put manufacturing manufacturers in these countries, it can maybe create jobs <coughs> for people or something. So if they've got no way for us to profit, we let them starve? Not necessarily, that was just, like, a... Maybe that can do. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. if we're in it not for profit, but just to help people, they kind of have some responsibility to regulate their population. Really. And if we're going to help them, they want, I mean, we, they should need to, like, want to be helped and want to change for us, not just, not just saying, like, oh, all right, we'll take your money and just keep doing what we're doing. But how much is, like, having all those kids really, like, hurting the, like, like actually hurting, like, not giving us any, um, Economic help or anything because those kids like grow up and take jobs and it could benefit the country. It's not necessarily be all that bad. Yeah. Um, like we're already in debt, so why are we helping countries who may or may not be able to pay us back in the long run? And like, I don't know. I just it doesn't make sense. That we, I don't think we're teaching them like <coughs> the proper way to like use birth control or the proper way to like become a successful country, and we're just losing money in general. I mean, does anybody here feel that we have a fundamental obligation to address suffering? Well, I mean... Fundamentally. In like, do you take food off your plate to feed a starving person? Because then you do personally, or maybe if there was someone near us. I think people can like put it out of their minds when it's across the world. That's why we have strong borders. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I, I really wonder about this. Like, how do we. Because when I said, do we have a fundamental obligation, what did you say? I said, I said no, or no, I said something after you said, um, should we give the starving person to feed off our plate? And I said, no, then we'll starve ourselves. Yeah, I think it means like share. <coughs> what? I think it means like share our. Okay. Well, it's like a thing, I mean, tragedy can happen in your life. If 
I can do this. If I have food for my children, then there's enough to like split it up and give yeah. it to someone else. Yeah. You're just going to feed your children because. Yeah, I mean, I I find this to be like a really interesting. Like we're kind of resource and economically hoarding at this point. We're we're okay. We're really okay. Globally, about half of humanity lives on less than two fifty a day. Uh, about point eight billion, eight hundred million people have acute malnutrition, and about three hundred million people are literally starving to death. I like wasting away. About one in three, one in five humans, uh, over one billion for sure, drinks water polluted with human pathogens because they just can't get clean drinking water. And we're trying to figure out whether, question mark, we have an obligation to help, whether it's profitable for us to help, and whether we're at that point of, you know, like, are we going to starve by sharing? Of the developed nations, we give one of the lowest percentages. There are countries that give 30 times more wealth as a percentage of GDP than we do. What were those percentages? I forget, but there's a thing on the internet. No, I just saw this. Uh, Ms. Sandler can give us those things. <laughs> Okay, students in the audience, uh, don't you appreciate that they went first so you didn't have to? Thank you. Make sure your name is on your debate notes and then leave them in the box. Make sure to have your name on there. Next topic. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Next topic. Is it, but weren't they kind of debating the middle? Or what would be a strict population? That's the thing. Like the the topic was like a strict population control. But when do you know when you're going from strict to middle? Yeah, I mean they should have said at all costs, not like. Yeah, I could have brought up like you guys are kind of fighting. I don't know. Yeah. But you don't bring it up, so we did anyway. <laughs> Please update the rosters on the whiteboard. Banana list on the whiteboard. In the box of the whiteboard. the students in the front not to bother debating about how government should or should not. Remember that you're arguing the extremes. So you're saying by any means necessary absolutely including forced sterilization and abortion and getting up of people's uterus and execution or whatever. And you're saying, no matter what, I don't care if people are starving, it's a fundamental right to reproduce. Um, what is, what is yeah. So you'll go first. Right. And you guys will get the last word. Remind me when we get to the conclusions. Remember, you're just going to introduce. Remember, you're not going to read. Just introduce your position and go for it. So we shouldn't regulate um, human 
population growth because it's a fundamental right and it causes many social and economic problems if you do. Well, I mean, 400 stone of like basic biological science is that there is a carrying capacity. That's like non, like you can't disagree with that. And like, we're one of the few species on Earth that can like realize that ultimately, like ultimately, our own life actions can lead to like our own duty. And so it's obvious that overpopulation will eventually lead to our certain demise. So it needs to be dealt with. Um, well, there's also better ways to regulate population growth rather than forcing it, like um, educating women and like in third world countries who don't necessarily have birth control causes like less them to have less skin and it's not necessarily forcing it on them. Is that not like a way of population control in of itself? But it's not forcing it on them. It's, it's, their, it's their right to use it or not. But even just educating them is giving them the right to use it and they do want to use it but it's not forcing it on them. You're saying how? You should be arguing that they will, government does not get involved in that. That people should be allowed to breed if they want to. Alright, so about the carrying capacity thing, while population is growing, the rate is steadily declining. It actually maxed out in the 1960s at 2%, and it's been dropping ever since. So, where we are, where in the whole world, just as a whole, population growth. Like the percentage at which it's growing. It, it, like the graph that we draw, how it spiked up and it's finally starting to level off. So, funny. <coughs> that's like, maybe in these like developed countries, but that's totally like outweighed by this huge problem that like in poor countries, which I does, like they're like terrible state that they're in. That Yeah, I mean, you're saying that no matter what, no matter what, the government doesn't get in my uterus. <laughs> no matter what. So by making like laws that um, that like if you have more than X number of children, you're in a higher tax bracket, things like that. They there's been many countries that have tried to do that. Well, that's government getting in my uterus. You're saying no matter what, the fundamental right. Okay, it's your right. Like you can't like you know argue like the government has like should protect your right. Like it has, it's like has the obligation to protect your right and like cultural and religious, your religious beliefs and everything. But the government is thinking that as a whole, and if we're gonna take the uh, reaching capacity and then everyone's going to move down with it. So if they stop it now, like in China, to give example, they had one child um, per family rule, and now you can tell that China is decreasing, which is also helping the environment. Well, not helping the environment, but keeping the environment steady with our population. And so there's also a study by two, um, 2050 that our population is going to reach 9.6 billion, and so then it's going to decrease um, supplies for everyone else, and so that's why we're trying to keep it Because everybody here refuses to argue the extremes, I'll make an extreme for you. Let's imagine that the planet is full, like chock full. Like, can't squeeze one more sardine into the can. And I want to have a baby. Of course. It's not a 
bad habit. It's a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? He's got a He's got it. Okay. okay. So I want to have a baby. Come hell or high water, I want to have a baby. I want to. My uterus. <laughs> it's my reproductive right. It's my relationship with the hand of my God. You're arguing that you're going to sterilize me, or force an abortion, or assassinate me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're arguing that it's okay for me to have that baby, even though someone's going to starve, because there's no more room in the can for more sardines. Oh no, we've already established that the can of sardines is full. That happens. Do you not believe that happens? No, and then the can is full. <laughs> He's going to have that baby. Oh, God, I don't know. It's his right to. <laughs> That's right. He's going <laughs> to. He's going to try to impregnate as many people <laughs> as that baby. As a matter of fact, that's right. <laughs> Look where he's going to start. Yeah, he's going Sucks. Mm -hmm. he's, gonna, he's gonna have that baby and it's his wife too. So you want to give up your life? Sacrifice your dad. Yeah, so you'd rather give up someone's life that has, is actually doing something useful. I am doing something useful. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd rather give up someone. Very useful. You'd rather give up your food, your resources, or someone you care about's resources, someone that's doing something useful for of like the world, to give it up for some newborn that you don't even know will survive. But what if they, what if they, well, what if they become and they find like another planet that we can live on? No, 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 Stop it! You guys don't let her talk! You guys don't let her talk! I'm gonna pull you in the recycling bin if you keep saying that. Boys, how is it possibly my right if someone else has to starve to have another baby? Like, like by saying yes to the same, you're literally just completely like, going against At least he's saying it, that's fine. Completely going against that whole point about the tragedy of common like that's well, you should be. Oh, that's a hit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like take it back to China. I'm like, I Because <laughs> 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 China is like. China like, like, has that like two uh, child policy and. Um, that's causing like issues with the uh, female abortion and stuff like that. Well, that's like personal. Like, it's I know, but it is a personal issue. Like, yeah, but we're not talking about China. We're talking about the world. Well, and in lots of places in the world, I know, but Ch China is like, like, especially issues. women don't exactly have control over their own like whether or not they have children. And so, if we're gonna offer like sterilizations. I would say that in some cases that that's actually a benefit to those people because they don't want to have more children. And so by making them get sterile after like their third children, then not only are we like helping the population go lower, but we're also doing certain people a favor. So it's not like 100% this is totally immoral. You guys are trying way too hard to find a middle ground and like hedging and hawing and hedging. I know that is immoral for him though because he wants to have that baby and even though you sterilize X number of people, he's going to find other X number of people that haven't been sterilized and then because it's the same. Trial and error. So he's just like, look, is it my body or does it belong to the government? It's your body. Right. But you're part of the country which protects you, so yeah, let's say you're on your own. Yeah, they're protecting you. They're protecting not just you, but the whole of the world. Like, 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 if, if it's gonna, <coughs> if it's gonna lead to like starvation of like, other people. Oh yeah, we've already yeah. established that the can of sardines is full. Yeah. 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 So by trying to sterilize them in many countries, you probably.
probably weren't killing me because they don't have. Them. Oh yeah, you didn't have to kill me. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the Chinese government should just kill the people that want to have. Well, would you rather have one person die instead of like twenty people die? It's not like would I rather? It's like well, it's, it's, it's the yeah, point. yeah, that's that, yeah, that's basically it. Like, yeah, because if he dies, or if he can't have a kid anymore, then that saves 20 other people's lives from being starved, since there's not enough reasons. I eat a lot. Exactly. So it's, it's either you kill one person and save 20 more, or you kill 20 people just to have one more baby. And also, if you sterilize someone, they, like, the amount of babies they could have had in their lifetime, like, that exponential growth is immediately, like, vanished. They die. He doesn't have a baby yeah, so much. Yeah. And you can't just tell the person, like, <laughs> yeah, how do you get There's a no physical way, way you can regulate him not having a baby. He's going to have a baby. Someone's going to have a baby. There's also, like, benefits <laughs> in that not having a baby. There's also, in China, there's benefits, like, socially and economically. Like, well, you could, like, receive lower taxes for not having kids. Like, we're not arguing how. We're no, not arguing how. It's just that, like, right there's, 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 there's no way to choose between, like, it is. Just killing people who are having lots of babies before sterilization and just having an infinitely growing exponential population. It's like, well, you gotta see, like, 100 years in the future, everyone here is gonna be dead. And then people here, yeah, all right, we might have taken away their moral right to have 50 children, but it's better off because the remaining people will have better lives than the people who had to go through freaking everyone starving from having a population of, like, 50 billion in this point. You see, that's a coherent argument. What's your argument on the other side of that? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that so you're right. It is. I mean, to paraphrase, but that, that might take too long. He said that the government has to limit people's rights so that they have a future, because the alternative is that they will overpopulate and everybody will starve. Right. In the process of that, they're killing people because they don't have kids, and potential. Well, if you're arguing that we're killing people by it, did you not? <laughs> you're killing people by not enforcing it because you're having another baby. Of, but that's more. So honestly, 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 this is a debate over the quality of life. Like, that's the thing this whole thing is basically. Yeah, like, like you'd rather have the quality of life be completely perfect. But that's, like, that's, like, that's, like, a, that's like a moral. Like, no, I mean, not really. It is moral. It is moral. <laughs> it's almost every justification. Like, like, it's like all, all that stuff. Like, if we were to say, force sterilize them after one child, maybe, then that one child in an overpopulated world is going to have a better life than if they had three children. They had to split their income between three children. So by having less people, morally, they're going to have a higher quality of life because there's less people. But that's their, that's their decision. If like they want family. to have three kids, then it's, it's totally their choice if they want their child to have a children. Yeah, I feel like it shouldn't They would make other children have forced lives by there being way more children that the world would have to support. It would be way harder for them to get education. It would be way harder for them to eat just based off of the land not having enough food to support them. It would be great quality like for everyone, parents too. Like it would be literally like it would be completely like not to benefit whatsoever besides yeah. just that. Yeah, so but you said like rights. you said like about that one family that you, you weren't talking about like the whole thing. You said about that one family it will decrease the quality of life for those two other kids that they have, but that's that families and like those parents' choice and who, what, what gives them that, how to determine that choice for them. Because it's right. Because it's nice. Right. Like, 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 like the government, you can't keep the government saying that, like, okay, we're forcing the new, it should be your right to say, okay, I'm going to, like, 
So, conclusions. <laughs> you conclude first? No. Then you conclude first. You don't have to read this, just sort of riff on what you were going to say. Everybody, this is your last word. So, although it is. <coughs> Um, so, <laughs> basically come to which one is more morally justified, and basically we're saying that it is more morally right to have other people die because you have a right to make babies and killing people so that they don't make those babies. But there's a good chance that there's people who are dying are like older than that baby, so maybe like the new like baby wolf kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then like our argument is the whole conclusion to the tragedy of the commons. And how if everyone had it their way, they would overexploit their environment and the environment that's trying to sustain them will fail to sustain them. And the whole point of the tragedy of the commons is that in order to maintain a sustainable environment, the government needs to step in and the government needs to uh, implement regulations that keeps not only uh, in the tragedy of the commons people from exploiting their environment directly, but in this case applying to reducing the population. So that way the environment could sustain the population for uh, an instance longer than the pack can sardines would over a few generations. Students in the audience, please complete your ballots now. As quickly as possible, please. That's ten seconds. Gabby's going to come around and collect. So now, students in the debate, how many of you agreed with your position? <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 No, no, no. How many of you agree with the extreme? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. No wow. That will kill you if you want to get pumped like thirty. <laughs> <laughs> There's no like hope. There's no hope. Like we're taking all the magic out of this. What about the audio? There is no magic in baby making. All they say. You mean this for your specific like, scenario? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Do you mean just for your specific scenario? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we've already done way too much talking about my reproductive potential. <laughs> what I mean is, do we want a world where the government decides who reads and how many? Where someone might say, sorry, your numbers didn't come up, you don't get to have a baby. Like, you would like to trade away your reproductive potential in exchange for a guarantee of resources? For someone else? Well, I'm for you. Yeah. Well, just like just like how now, like child protective services will take a child away from a family if it's deemed that they're unfit to raise that child. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. Like why, like why should somebody be allowed to have a child if it's going to make like other children not be able to have like a good enough life? Because it's like you won't let them 
like raise that child if they're not able to give their child a good enough life. So if it's going to directly like make the lives of other people bad, why should they be allowed to have one? Also, like if I'm just saying for Santa Barbara, there's no way that if someone has a baby here, someone else is going to die. It's, it's going to be something like the future. Talking about. <laughs> but someday it's the point where it is. This is if this is completely important. Yeah, I don't know about that. People in Santa Barbara probably use way more resources than people in the third world countries. So if you were to talk about like how much food we waste and how many resources we use per person, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's probably worse than one person dying. It's I agree. Yeah, the, like, yeah. I agree that we should regulate it. But where, where we're regulating it, like they're not gonna. I don't think they're gonna regulate it in America. If we do regulate it, it's gonna be. Like, I mean, you're you're talking about kind of like your your vision of what's going to happen. Realistically, you're probably right. We're very likely to be the last nation standing, so to speak. But I just I I really wonder, like, when we have that can of sardines, imagine the system of choosing who breeds. Like imagine if they're just like, oh, you want to have a baby? Okay, well, that's not going to happen. Right. I mean, imagine if they decided that someone was better looking, or if they decided that someone was more intelligent, or if they decided that someone had more potential than you do. You would, you would be a part of a government that told you you're still paying taxes and you're still living here, but you won't be allowed to have a child? That's okay. We can call it random if you want. You're like that sounds good to you. Well, I mean, it has to happen at some point. I guess we can't all keep doing this. If I mean, what if we have hope that we all live and die together, and the baby Jesus will decide? And no, <laughs> no, I'm just kind of shocked that everybody's okay with this. That's like such an unusual population. I think it's because we don't think a lot. Is it because you're mad? <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's hard, I think it's hard to like imagine that situation, but if you really do imagine that situation, like, like I do, like, I, like I want to have a child, and they say you can't, like, I think right now it's really hard to like, picture that, but when it comes down to like, in that situation, you can do it, like, 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 yeah, yeah, I was just thinking the same thing, like she was saying, like, Right now that sounds like, okay, whatever. Yeah, because it's like, you, you all realize that the uh, incentive to have children is not necessarily the humping itself. It is the hope for the future that's presented by a child. You know, my, my mom and dad were on the run from the... Uh, <laughs>